Hello, and welcome to my Skull the Hero Slayer guide, part 3. In this part, I'm going to cover the Act 3 enemies you'll face, the adventurer fight, and the boss battle at the end. And just a reminder from part 2, whenever I talk about dashing into or through an attack, I'm assuming that you have the flexible spine witch trait. Very important, you should have that at this point. Act 3 is a laboratory filled with experimental enemies. So of course, this means a lot of the enemies you face here will explode upon death. This footman enemy is almost identical to the ones you faced before, except they run and attack just a little bit faster. However, the real issue is when they die, a red glow covers them, an exclamation mark appears above their head, and you have roughly one second to not be so close and cuddly with him. Otherwise, you're going to get pretty hurt. Let's cover two at once this time. Throughout Act 3, you'll see green and red vials scattered around. Breaking them will release these little ghost thingies. The green vials release little white ones that fly around and try to nip at you. The red vials are far more dangerous as these ghosts will fly at you kamikaze style and try to blow up on you. These still have the one second delay on their explosion, so as long as you're moving or dash when they arrive, you'll be fine. The ghosts aren't considered a mandatory enemy to kill. So even if there's a few of them flying around in the room, you can choose to leave them there as long as the main enemies are defeated. The next nasty enemy is the Ogre. These guys look a lot more imposing than they really are. The Ogre can be stun locked with repeated attacks, but only for so long before he decides he's had enough and wants a turn at swinging. He only has one attack. He'll swing his club towards wherever you are twice in a row and then swing a third time. The third swing changes direction based on wherever you are at that time. So, a very easy way to deal with him is to run or dash past him, hit him a few times in the back while he's doing his first two club slams, and then move back through him again to avoid the third swing, rinse and repeat. Honestly, once you've seen his attack once, that's all there is to it. He's more troublesome when he's with a group of enemies and you take your eye off of him. But on his own, he's pretty simple. The ogre is another enemy that explodes upon death, so be ready to move away after he goes down. Oh look, the trees have come back from Act 1. These guys use the targeted roots attack, so keep an eye on the ground and move away from the red glow, simple enough. They have a new attack though whenever you get a little too close and snuggly. They'll glow white for a moment to warn you and then stick out sharp pointy branches to poke at you. If you continue to stay close to them, they'll spam this move over and over. You can dip in and out taking your chances to hit them, use range attacks, or stand at a nice range with a really big sword and laugh at their tiny pokey branches as you cleave at them. The evil trees also explode when they die, so don't try hugging these ones. Seeing as how we're in a lab, let's talk about the large alchemists. Not to be confused with the smaller ones that you'll see in the area, these guys can be quite troublesome. Just like your very own alchemist skull, these guys can summon a purple golem to do an attack for them. The summoned golem will either shoot out a large projectile which then explodes in a scattered pattern, or the golem does a close range attack followed by small explosions. The alchemist can also throw out vials that release the small ghost enemies that we talked about earlier. Sometimes the white ghosts and sometimes the red ghosts, sometimes one at a time and sometimes a bunch at a time. The alchemists can't change what versions of these attacks they have however, so once they've shown you which golem they'll summon or which vial they toss, it'll always be the same ones. These guys can cause quite a bit of trouble if left alone, so I do recommend dealing with them quickly if you're given the chance. These guys do not explode though, so I guess that's nice. Lastly, we have the summoners. The summoners won't fight you. However, once you've gotten too close to them or start attacking them, they'll begin a ritual to call out a golem. This is a test of your damage. If you can kill both of them before their ritual is completed, you'll have prevented the summoning. Yay. If you're too slow, however, and even one of them is left alive and the ritual completes, the summoners will be automatically killed and a golem is spawned. It's important to remember that you do need to kill both of the summoners to prevent this ritual. First and foremost, the summoned golem is not a mandatory enemy that you need to kill in order to leave a room. I repeat, you do not have to kill these guys if you'd rather just run away. However, if you'd rather stand and fight, do know that the first attack the golem does is a rushing charge, provided that you're within horizontal range of him. At any point, if you're not close to him, he'll summon large dark quartz crystals that explode a moment after they appear. He also has a close range slam, which spawns these exploding crystals, as well as a horizontal mouth blast that travels towards you. All of his attacks have a pretty large wind-up, giving you plenty of time to move. 
So, just like with the Ogre, the best way to fight the Golem is to dash through him each time he tries to attack you, and then hit his backside. He drops a little bit of gold and quartz when he dies, but whether or not that's worth it is up to you. The enemies in Act 3 aren't too difficult when they're on their own, however this changes when there's a lot of them together. It can become a real test of awareness, recognizing what enemies are in the room, which ones have ranged attacks, which ones explode, and which ones you need to prioritize. There's a few enemies I haven't covered because they're relatively basic, but don't let that fool you, these guys can also be an issue in a group as well. If you're comfortable having a golem spawn, that's fine. However, if you really want to avoid it, I do recommend nuking down the summoners as soon as you can. Saving your quintessence for these can be a really big help. I do tend to get rid of any ranged enemies first, but this can change depending on what kind of skulls and items that you get. It is a lab after all, so experiment and see how you like handling it. Now, of course, there's an adventure fight halfway through Act 3, just like the other areas. And of course, that means the enemy team has another member to help them out. I'm not going to lie to you, the Act 3 adventure fight can be pretty hard. There's a bunch of different combinations you can run into, and interrupting their ultimate attacks can be rough. This is a test of your reflexes, decision making, and whether your build is good enough. Without a doubt, if the enemy team has the priest girl on it, you're in for a rough fight. She acts as one of the only damage checks in the game. So it goes without saying, if she shows up, you need to focus her immediately. While there's an element of luck to this fight, your own experience with the adventurers really comes into play. Practice makes perfect, so if you're struggling with this battle, just keep trying. It's almost crucial to have the majority of your witch traits filled in by this point, especially the most expensive ones. They make a world of difference. Say hello to the Chimera, the Act 3 boss fight. There's a few things to go over here, so let's get started. The very first thing the Chimera will do is summon a bunch of experimental containers that fall down from the sky, releasing dog-like minions upon landing. The containers themselves can hurt if they hit you, so be mindful of where they're falling. The minions themselves still hurt, but have noticeably less HP than the ones you've probably seen already. It is important to know that the Chimera's attacks can also hurt these little guys and will often kill them in one hit hit. So it's really up to you whether you want to deal with them quickly or focus the Chimera and wait for her to kill them for you. The risk is up to you. The Chimera will also launch a big purple glob of bad stuff that bounces all around the room like a ball. She can repeat this attack so that there's more than one ball on the screen at once, so be careful and keep an eye on where you're standing. It's not too hard to predict where the balls will land and most of the time they won't even be anywhere near you. I find that if you panic and run around too much, you're more likely to get hit than if you just find a safer place to sit and move in and out from that spot. She'll also summon down cascading pools of the same purple sludge. This is easily one of her more dangerous attacks as these waterfalls of yuck tick for constant damage as long as you're touching them. Along with her attack that summons minions, this one is also forewarned by her doing a large roar. Because both of these attacks involve stuff falling from the sky, it's a good idea to check above you whenever she starts roaring. If she's summoning minions, rocks and other debris will fall down to let you know. The special warning for the sludge is that it will preemptively leak from the sky to let you know exactly where it's going to be falling. If you find yourself standing in a bad spot, you can dash through the sludge to get by them. This might be a bit trickier with the skulls that can't double dash or ones that have short range dashes. The Chimera can also fire out three more balls of sludge that slowly fall down and burst on the ground. The splash that's made by these has a larger hitbox than when the balls are in the air, so I strongly recommend jumping up and even dashing to remain airborne long enough for the balls to pass you and hit the ground. There should always be enough space for you to move between them, or at least have a safe spot to stand. If you're standing roughly in the middle of the room, the Chimera can also bite you. This attack does a lot of damage, and if you're too busy watching everything else in the room, it can bite you before you even considered it. You can dash through this attack like all the rest, but once again, the hardest part about this move is whether you're paying attention to it. You can prevent the Chimera from ever doing this move in your fights if you simply don't linger in the middle of the room for too long. Obviously standing too far away isn't very helpful if you want to hit her, so the only option left is standing right up in her face. So that brings us to her next attack. She'll try to squish you under her foot, simple as that. It hurts, as you can imagine, and she has the option of repeating this attack several times in a row. Just like with her bite attack, she won't do this if you aren't in range of it to begin with. However, I do prefer standing close to her and avoid the stomp, because for me the forewarning animation is far easier to react to than the bites one. 
I strongly recommend dashing to avoid this attack. You can dash in towards her and use the invincibility frames, or dash away to avoid it entirely. Once you bring the Chimera to half HP, she'll transition to phase 2. She jumps back and leaves the screen, followed by a red warning glow all over the floor. You can jump to avoid the incoming attack, or dash through it if your timing is good. I recommend jumping and dashing if you want to be extra safe. The Chimera's body is also a hitbox during this attack, so don't simply jump up and towards her without dashing, otherwise you'll get hit by her body as she enters. Two platforms will then fall down shortly after she lands. These can hurt you, so don't be under them. They always fall in the same spots. The Chimera will then spray an arcing stream of sludge that deals a ton of damage covering the screen. After the spray is complete, she slams the ground again, destroying the platforms as sludge rains down from above. The game wants you to use the platforms as cover, but I'm going to let you in on a bit of secret tech. Run up to the Chimera as she begins spraying the sludge and dash through the stream as it comes up. Doing this lets you avoid the attack and remain close enough to the boss that you can still hit her and get some good damage in while there's less commotion on the screen. You then need to dash again to avoid her stomp and the sludge. It can take practice, but it's worth learning to make the fight easier in the future. From this point on, she continues using all of the same attacks I mentioned before, but she will fire them off quicker now, so it's even more likely that you might get a tough combination of moves to avoid. She will also start doing her phase 2 transition attack where she leaves the screen after she's done a few of her normal ones. The quicker you kill her, the less of this you have to deal with. It's definitely Definitely a lot to take in for a boss fight, but I promise you, it isn't as rough as it might seem. Many people, myself included, agree that the Act 2 boss, the Liana Sisters, and the third adventurer fight are more difficult than this. Just like with all the other fights in the game, practice makes perfect. With time, you'll be slaying the Chimera with ease. I do want to stress for the final time that having the flexible spine witch trait is basically mandatory unless you're feeling particularly masochistic. And that brings us to the end of part 3. I hope this video was helpful to you and I wish you all the best with your journey through the lab to take down the big doggo. This is as far as we can go in early access, so expect part 4 sometime after the game's official release on the 21st. If you have any questions or need clarification, please feel free to ask in the comments. Thank you again for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Have a good one.